Hello everyone, Joe from Central Jersey, Conrail and Inscale, and welcome back. So this segment, this is going to be our follow-up to our car cards uh, segment. Uh, we're going to get started on doing the waybills. So like I indicated to everybody at the end of episode 16, I was going to get started on the waybills. And if you remember from the car card segment that I said that I was going to just put it on hold for a while because I was getting a little confused. So what had happened is this. I had envisioned that the Dakota Pro 3 operation software was going to kind of be a, a good stopgap measure until I got to the waybills to operate the layout for me. But I don't know if I just wasn't getting the, the knack of it or what I wasn't doing right, but you know, I worked with it for weeks and tried to tailor it to, to fit the Sahara secondary and it just wasn't moving the cars around like I expected it to. So it got real frustrating and, and it really just didn't work out. Okay. So I made the determination to, you know, let's just stop putting off the inevitable and let's get going on the waybills. So um, I practiced with some a uh, bunch of waybills, and it, uh, I really got the knack of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through how I how I did these waybills, so you can see, you know, get another take on on how to set them up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the way that I developed to uh, to write out my waybills, and uh, you know, pass on some little tips and stuff for everybody. So maybe we can help everybody else uh, get their waybills going. So let's get started. Okay, everyone. So the first thing I did. Uh, prior to doing my weigh bells. Well, actually, I did this, a lot of this research has been ongoing, but this is how I went about it. So to research the commodities, um, who was manufacturing them, and who would be sending them to the Sahara secondary. So let's take, for example, ethylene glycol. So companies that manufacture ethylene glycol, I plug that into my Google search, and it pops up all these different companies. So let's take this Huntsman uh, here, Huntsman Chemicals. Um, if you look at their location here, you hit that, it goes to the Huntsman page, and you look, um, and they say that their products, their glycol products, and it refers you to the Port Natchez site. Port Natchez, you go to locations, Port Natchez, Texas. So then what I do is I um, go to Google, and I do a search for Huntsman at Port Natchez, Texas, and you can see here, all the uh, contact information and then what I do is I go to their images and most of the time I find a nice aerial image so I use that as a reference point so you can see this is what the facility looks like so then what would I do is I go over to my Google Earth and I plug in Port Huntsman Port Natchez Texas and I get this aerial view so now what I'm doing here is I want to check you know is it viable that this company ships by, uh, ethylene glycol out by rail and you can see in here there's a lot of rails inside here and you can see there's a lot of tank cars so it's safe to say that they probably ship a lot of uh, ethylene glycol out by rail so now that i have that that's how i went about to gather all the information for the various commodities that i needed to deal with so now I had pages and pages of handwritten notes and it was just very confusing. So then what I did is I went over to Excel and I made a spreadsheet. So here's my spreadsheet. Uh, this is page, sheet one, uh, Sayerhurst secondary commodities list. Um, up at the top we have commodities down on the left, um, shippers highlighted in yellow. That would be the company shipping it on. Uh, the receiver, the, this is the, the industry on the layout that's receiving it. The UN classification and the car type. So, scroll down here to ethylene glycol, and you can see up oh, there's Huntsman. I've already put it in, and then Huntsman would be shipping ethylene glycol over to these facilities. Would be receiving it here on the Sahara Secretary, Prestone, and Sibagaygi. So now the other information on this sheet is uh, this red block here. I'm, I'm highlighting the uh, the hazardous materials, and over here this is the UN classification. So now let's talk about the UN classification list. So what I used is a book called the DOT Response Guidebook. Um, so we go in here, uh, DOT Response Guidebook. Okay. So there, this is the DOT Response Guidebook. It's used by first responders to identify common uh, chemicals and their UN classification. So now you can buy one online. As you can see, they're, they're inexpensive. There's also a website that you can go to here and get the uh, PDF format so you can page down through, uh, you know, and, and look up the information for free. Me personally, I, I have, I, I have a, a guidebook that I had from years ago uh, when you know, I went to college and uh, I use that. Um, there hasn't been many changes. So if you can get your your hands on one that's relatively uh, you know recent within the last 15 years, there hasn't been very many changes uh, that would affect us in model routing. I mean, there's been 
other changes have been made to the guidebook, but that's more on the first responder side, and it's beyond the scope of this conversation. So with that being said, so now let's go back to our spreadsheet, and now you can see that um, you know ethylene glycol is classified as 3082, and if you look it up in the guidebook, that's a, um, a miscellaneous chemical, and the placard for 38, uh, 3082, let me just uh, show you what it looks like, just so you have an idea, uh, DOT plaque. Placard uh, 3082, boom, and there you go. That's what the placard looks like right there. So just for a quick reference, it's classified as a miscellaneous hazardous material. So that's good for when um, you're detailing your freight cars. Now, the reason I want to know this for my way bills is so that the um, crews can take the appropriate action, uh, you know, for the hazard classification. Also, um, it's... Uh, I'm going to highlight it on the uh, the way bill. And then it will also help me when I'm detailing my cars to know which placards I need to put on those tank cars. So I've made this list and I put it alphabetically so you can see all the different um, the commodities that I'm dealing with. Um, as you can see, there's a couple blanks like the fuel oil. You know, this is kind of a recent uh, addition. I haven't really done any research on who's shipping fuel oil. But, you know, this list is going to be, you know, growing and, and changing constantly so now it's in a nice spreadsheet format and it'll make it easier for uh, you know interpreting the information when we do our way bills so now what happened was I'm like well now it's I can see it by commodity but you know which industries are are receiving on the say her secondary and it's kind of difficult to see in this format so I made a second sheet and this is the second say her secondary receiver consignee list so these are all the industries on the Sayher Secondary who would be receiving products. And as you can see, I use the same green color from sheet one just to correspond. And so North American Reese, that's the industry, Englishtown, New Jersey, they uh, receive plastic. Uh, they are located on the main line. Uh, I put that in blue. And then the car type I put is covered hopper. And you can see as you go down, here's Seba Geige. Uh, this is all the materials that they would receive. They are also highlighted in red because they're ha um, hazardous materials. And they are on the Toms River Industrial, and that's highlighted in pink. And they most of these products are in tank cars. So if you look up here, uh, like, for instance, JCPNL in Freehold, they receive utility poles and transformers. And I put the two different types of cars for the different commodities because um, uh, there was one... There's one of them that has, oh, okay, here, uh, Naval Weapon Station Earl. They get fuel and ammo. Uh, they're on the Sahar Secondary. Well, the fuel is in tank cars and the ammo is in box cars. So that's just an example. So that's why there's multiple different types on the same line. Um, so these are, you know, all the Sahar, uh, all the Southern Secondary, excuse me, say, Southern Secondary uh, uh, receivers. Here's the Galipsy branch receivers that we'll be uh, dealing with um, and the Dayton branch. So this helps me so I can see, you know, who's going to be getting uh, materials, who's going to be receiving, and what kind of cars they're going to be getting. So it just gives me an idea for, you know, planning uh, in the future for uh, obtaining cars. So now, we, I'm just, now I'm a, at this point, I'm like, oh, well, now who's sending materials off? So I made a third sheet, and this is our Sayher Secondary Shippers List. And these are the industries on the Sayher Secondary who are shipping material out. So, as you can see here, uh, the say, uh, Lake, you know, Naval Air Station Lakehurst, they're shipping out contaminated dirt. They're located on the main line. Uh, I, have, I put a column in both sheet uh, two and three for the milepost markers, and I just haven't gotten around to filling them out, milepost and milepost. And then I use the same colors to correspond over to sheet one, um, so it makes sense when you look at both sheets. And then, um, again, using the red to uh, denote uh, hazardous materials, and the car type. So now, as you can see here, the Sayer Secondary is more of an endpoint user. Most of our customers on the Sayer Secondary receive materials, but they don't ship out very many products. So these are the very few industries that I'm dealing with that are shipping out products. So uh, Lakehurst, the, the dirt, uh, Clayton, the sand, um, Sibagaygi, the uh, liquid resin, um, Naval Web Station Earl Ammo, National Lead in Parlin is going to be doing titanium oxide, and in Capital Steel and Cerebral is shipping out steel rebar. So, and that is pretty much how I organize my information. So now let's take these sheets. I'm going to print these out, 
and we'll take them down to the layout room and we'll get started filling out our waybills. Okay, so let me explain how I did these waybills. So let's take, for instance, this tank car. This is Prestone antifreeze, and this tank car here is uh, PTLX uh, 120307. That's a rail car that is owned by GE Rail Car. So what you have to do is first realize this car that's sitting here on the siding, we're going to assume that this car just got dropped here by the SA31 and that it's full of ethylene glycol and it's ready to be unloaded. Okay, so now what I do is I grab my car card with the waybill in it and it's set to cycle one. So I'm going to start the four cycle waybill with the car being dropped loaded at the industry. So what I'll do is for consignee, I will put down Prestone Howell, New Jersey. Okay, so that is who's getting the car. Okay, so what we need to think about with this car is how did this car get here? So this car came from SA, which is the two letter designation for Brown's Yard, to Toth. And Toth, if you remember, is the timetable designation for Howell. Okay? So I filled out the car card to this point here. SA to Toth, consignee Prestone at Howell. So now, there's the VIA line. So how did the car get from SA to Toth? Well, it came via the WJ SA 31. Okay? And that's where we are now. Now, who sent it? Who sent it to Presto? Well, we're going to say that it was Huntsman out of Port Natchez, Texas. I hope I'm saying that right. If anybody out there from Texas isn't, can you tell me if I'm saying it? Is it Port Natchez? I hope. So now, this is where we are now. Okay? And bill of lading. So we're going to put ethylene glycol. and our UN classification of 3082. And there's our first cycle. Now, here's the tricky part. So now we're gonna go to cycle number, uh, step two. So I'm gonna flip my way belt and my car card And the first thing what I can assume, so now we've, we've dropped the car, we're at the next session. Now what is the status of that car? That car sitting on that track is now empty because the, the people at Prestone have taken the ethylene glycol out and they put it in their storage tanks. So I'm gonna put it in empty, okay? So now, if it's empty, what do we do with it? Well, we need to route it from Toth back to SA. Okay. And now, how would it get from Toth to SA? Well, via the WJ SA31. So I'm going to fill that in in the via block WJ SA31. Now, in this respect here, this is what I've done. If it's going back empty, who's sending it empty? Well, Prestone. So under Shipper and Address, I'm going to put Prestone, Howell, New Jersey. Okay. And there we go. And now the last thing to fill out is the consignee address, and the person who would be receiving this car would be Huntsman 
out of Port Natchez, Texas. Then I'll go on the top. Now, I'm going to put down Huntsman out of Port Natchez, Texas because I'm going to assume that this car is under long-term lease. Okay, so let's take a pause here and let's talk about this. From what I've gathered and what I've been able to read is that there's three different styles of cars. Number one, there's a wholly owned car. And what that means is somebody owns that freight car. Just like if you went down to the dealership and you said, hey, I wanna buy a new car. So you go to the salesman, you buy the car, you pay your cash, or if you don't have the cash, you sign a bank note, and then you make payments. Then that car belongs to you. It's your responsibility to clean it. It's your responsibility to do any tune-up on it, change any oil, take care of the tires, et cetera, et cetera. That's one type of uh, ownership of a, of a freight rail car. So the other type of rail car would be a long-term lease. So that would be just like you going down to the dealership walking into the salesman and say, I want to lease a car. So you go in, you sign your documents, they give you the car, you go off the lot, you make your monthly payments, but you drive it, you put gas in it, but you don't have to pay the maintenance on it because the maintenance is part of the lease. So the where you've leased the vehicle, the, the, the vehicle to from, you take it back to them and they change the oil and take care of it. It's the same thing as a long-term lease on a freight rail car. And the last type of freight rail car would be a short-term lease or a pool service. So that would be just like you going down to a rental car agency, walking in the door and saying, hey, I'm in a bind, I need a car, what do you got? And they say, oh, here's one. And you say, that, that matches what I need, I'm gonna rent it. You, you sign the contract, you take it and drive it, you use it for a short term, you bring it back to them, you pay the bill, and you're done. They take care of cleaning it, they take care of uh, washing it, they take care of changing the oil and the tires and making it ready for the next customer. That's the same thing as a short term lease or a pool service. So because I'm comfortable with that, I'm just gonna run with that here on the Sarah Secondary. I'm gonna assume that there's three, those three different types of cars. I'm gonna have the, the, the owned cars, I'm gonna have the the long-term lease and the short-term leases. Okay, so with all, the reason I bring up all this is because the way we filled out our way bill, we're going to assume that this car is a long-term lease to Huntsman out of Port Natchez, Texas. So that's why I put this information here on consignee block to send it back to Port Natchez, Texas for, to go to Huntsman instead of sending it back to the um, the owner of the car, which is GE Rail Car. So, now, the car goes back to the Browns yard on the SA31. Now we're gonna flip the way bill to step number three. Under lading, the car hasn't been refilled, so it's still empty. and it still needs to go to the consignee, which would be Huntsman, out of Port Natchez, Texas. Now, we have to figure out how do we get from Brown's Yard to Port Natchez. Well, we're sitting in SA with this car now, so we're gonna go from SA to Oak Island, Newark. So right there, there's our routing information. We're going from SA, Brown's Yard, to OI, Oak Island, in Newark. So now, how are we gonna get to Oak Island? We're gonna go on the WJ OI 16. And that is the transfer train that runs between Brown's Yard and Oak Island. And again, the Shepper, who's sending it back to Port Natchez? Prestone. And there you have it. So we're at cycle number three. So now the OI-16 takes the train from Brown's Yard, which still hasn't been built yet, down to Oak Island. And Oak Island on the Sarah Secondary is being represented in the staging yard. So then the car ends up in the staging yard. So now our, now our tank car is sitting in staging yard, and that's representing Oak Island. So at this point, you have to use a little bit of uh, you know make-believe 
and so that car needs to continue on from Oak Island out to, um, you know, out to Chicago to the Gateway Yard, and get routed over to another railroad to get back down to Port Natchez so that it can get filled again. So, but because we don't model anything past the staging yard, that's where we're going to assume at this point it's in the staging yard, it has come back from Port Natchez and it's filled again. So we're gonna change the lading to ethylene from empty to ethylene glycol. Okay, so now the card looks like this. Okay, so it's sitting in Oak Island and we need to get it down to Brown's yard. So for routing, we're gonna do OI to SA via, would be how, what train's gonna take it back down to SA, that's gonna be the OI 16 again. So we're gonna do WJ OI 16. And this time, now this consignees and shippers flip-flop. So now who's sending it back to Brown's yard would be Huntsman. And who's receiving the car? Presto, so that's gonna be your consignee. And so now, our card looks like that. Has all the pertinent information. So, now the car goes on the OI-16, goes down to SA, and you now flip the bill again, but you're out of numbers, so you gotta go back to number one. And so now, the way bill says that. Needs to go to Prestone and Howell from SA to Toth via the SA-31, and it's full of ethylene glycol being sent from Huntsman in Port Notches, Texas. So now you can see how this way bill works. So as you just rotate around, it just keeps cycling back and forth. Commodities list, and this, we finished up this way bill. So if you notice, the one thing I did do is I went back and uh, I highlighted the uh, UN classification on all the spots. So that this way we know that when it's, it draws the operator's attention that there's hazardous materials so they can take the appropriate action. Okay, so let's take a look at some other waybills. So this waybill here, this is an example of a car that is being leased, a short-term lease. So you can see cycle one, uh, Sibagaygi is the uh, consignee. It's being shipped by Dow Chemical. It's full of chlorine. And if you go to number two, when you flip it to cycle number two, you can see that now the car is empty the shipper is Sibagaygi out of Tom's River, and the consignee, it's going back to PPG Industries in Pittsburgh, who is the owner of the car. And the way we know this is because we filled out our car card, and when I put the owner information under return to. So now, it goes through its route from the Tom's River Industrial back to the Browns Yard. Then once it's there, and the session's over, we flip it to number three. And then it continues on its way to PPG Industries, it goes from Browns Yard to the OI, PI, or to the OI the, via the OI-16, and then one, that's represented by staging. And again, the car is still empty. So now it gets to the staging yard, and we at the end of that session, we flip that, and now here it is again. Now it's going back to Sibagaygi, uh, going from Oak Island to Browns Yard, it's full of chlorine. Oop, I forgot to highlight that. And now the car has run its route off the layout out in the real world and now it's coming back from Dow Chemical again full of chlorine. So as you can see that's kind of the the way I interpret the short-term lease that once it's empty it's being released back to the car owner here but then it's gonna, you know, when we get to cycle f number four and we refill it, we're gonna flip it back where it's now coming from Dow Chemical. So that's just an, uh, an example of a um, short-term lease. Now, w what you have to realize when you're looking at these is you can't get too, too wrapped up and get too confused. All I really did is just change the consignee um, over here on cycle two, or um, on cycle two, I just can change the consignee. Instead of sending it back to um, Dow Chemical, where it came from, I'm sending it back to the owner. It just adds a little operational interest. And all it is is I'm just changing two lines. It doesn't affect the routing of the car, because the routing of the car, if you look, is still pretty simple. It goes from Brown's Yard to Tom's River Industrial on step one. 
Then when we go to step two, it goes from Tom's River Industrial to Brown's Yard. Then on step three, it goes from the Brown's Yard to Oak Island, which Oak Island is staging. And then on step four, it goes from Oak Island staging, which is staging, back to the Brown's Yard. And then we go back to step one, then it goes from Brown's Yard to Tom's River Industrial. And there's your four cycles. And it took me this long to figure that out. It's like I, like I thought, I was overthinking it. And once you get the hang of that, it goes very easily. So if you're having trouble, the best thing I can advise to you, what I was finding is just do the routing line first and then come back and fill in all this other information. You know, uh, the routing, it's just use those symbols to get it to where those four steps are on your layout. And don't get hung up with the point of what happens after staging because that's the end of your modeled territory. So you don't want to get hung up with that because who cares what happens off the layout from there. So here's another example of another uh, way of build. This is going to be for the, um, the Bowmark site at the Naval Air, Naval Air Station Lakehurst. And this one's a little different. I'm showing you this because it comes into the layout empty because this is an empty car and it needs to be filled. Uh, like I said, we only have a few industries that are shipping products out and this is one of them. So the car comes in empty. Uh, it's placarded um, already I, uh, because you know, there's some speculation, but um, you know, some cars that are, have residual amounts of you know, product in it can still be considered hazardous. So they, even though there's residual amounts in the, in the empty cars, they still keep it placarded. So that's why I did that. Um, so once it's at Lakehurst, it's now full of dirt. It's placarded for 2002. And it's now going to the National, uh, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission at Thule, Utah. And we go from uh, Mapo 65 back to the Browns Yard via the SA-37. On This is step two. Now we flip it to step three. It's still going to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission in Tule, Utah. But now it's going from the Browns Yard to Camden. It's going to CA. And it's going to go via the WJCA-53. Still full of dirt coming from Lakehurst. Still placarded. So that's step three. So now what happens now is it's going to a different track in staging because it's going to Camden, uh, the Pavonia Yard in Camden. That's what CA is. So now this car, once it gets to the staging slot for Camden, for the Pavonia Yard, then we empty the load and it now becomes empty. And now it needs to go back to Lakehurst. So it's gonna go from Camden to, to Browns Yard. And there is your four steps. So there's a couple uh, little peculiar um, situations that arose that were kind of tripping me up, and I think that was one of my problems that was uh, when I was overthinking it. So what I've this in this situation, this is how I've resolved this. This is the sand uh, unit train that needs to move down to Clayton, um, and this is how I did this one. I took the um, the waybills and I just put these big fluorescent U's on them, and I only did one waybill because all these others are empty and then I paper clipped it together. So that means that these have to move as a unit from SA down to Glidden on the SA-37 Extra, and it's being, the shipper is OTI out of Butterfield, Arkansas, and it needs to go down to Clayton, and they're empty. So then once they get to step two, they're loaded. Now they gotta go back to OTI in um, Arkansas, and they're full of sand coming from Gl uh, Clayton. They're going from the Glidensburg back to Browns. Then on step three, once it gets to Browns yard, I release the unit. So this way that the cars can be moved around individually if they have to be. And then they continue on down to Oak Island to staging and they're full of sand. And then once they get to staging, they're emptied and they need to go back to SA. When they come back on to stage to uh, step one, now it's a unit train again. So that's kind of how I solved the unit train problem. So this next little situation that I um, that I'm going to show you is so this tank car has been spotted full of toluene at the Sibagaygi plant in Tom, on the Tom's River Industrial. So now what if this car, I don't want to move it, you know, so it's obvious you don't flip the way bill, but my problem is how are the operators going to spot it in the box that says, oh, you know, 
this car needs to be held. So that's what this little paper clip is. I'm just gonna put a colored paper clip on it to, to show the operators, hey, this car need, does, needs to stay where it is, don't move it. And you know, a lot of people, what they do is they'll put way uh, their bill boxes out and they'll have one for uh, hold, they'll have one for uh, pickup and one for set out. So one bill box is one siding, but you know, in a plant like the Toms or Industrial, then I would have to have probably nine boxes and so that just doesn't make sense so it's easier to just do it i think this way just put this little keep it at it's been dropped it needs to stay there it's not ready to be unloaded put the paper clip in there so the way bill can't be turned and that way it's in the box and the operators see it so that's how i've um handled the hold function of the uh car cards and way bills Okay, so this next little card. This is another little situation that kind of arose that kind of got me confused. And I kind of took, sat back and just thought about it and I came up with this solution. So, what if this car is spotted and the plant operator needs it to be moved by the crew? How would we indicate that? So what I did was I came up with this little customer request form. Um, I just took a blue piece of paper, I um, cut it, uh, I'm this is just temporary right now. I'm going to end up typing it up on the computer and I'll put a heading in here. And then all the, um, when I act as clerk before the operating session and I decide I want to throw a curveball in on, on the crew, I'll say, hey, you know what? Let's put this in. So what this means is that the plant said, hey, this car's sitting at the steam plant, but we need it moved over to building 108. So could you please move that car? So when it's on cycle one and it's been dropped before I flip the bill, I'll slide this in there. So now the crew needs to move it to the new spot and that'll be the end of the session. And then once the session's over, I pull this out, I flip this to cycle two, and now the car is free to move about the layout on its route. So that's my way that I came up with for the re, uh, the re spot. Okay, so there you have it, there's the waybill. So the biggest piece of advice I can give you when you're filling out these waybills is actually physically put the car on the track at the spot of the business. Look at that car and you know if the business is receiving product, say, okay, this car's full. Now what happens? And then all you do is just pay attention to the routing line because those route the routing line is the key. That's where it gives you the most vital information to tell you how the car moves around the layout. Then fill out that routing and then go back and then fill out all that other per that other information to fill out the way bill. And then from there, flip it, unload it, move, and then fill out the route. Okay, it's unloaded, now it needs to go from the business to the yard. And then so on and so forth. And just do that as you go through the cycles and follow it all the way around the layout. And that will just really make it so much easier. That was really how I figured it all out. And just remember, when the car gets to staging, that's the end of it. Uh, you know, you're going after that. You're going to make believe. You're going to, you're going to pretend. You're going to do whatever you want to say it is. That after it goes out of staging, it's continuing on in the real world to do its business elsewhere, and it's back in your staging yard, and it's now full. So now, some of you out there may be uh, you know dealing with a smaller layout, like a four by eight, and you don't have a staging yard. So you pick a track on your layout that is your interchange point. And the interchange point now becomes your quote unquote staging area. So once the, the car goes from the, air, the, the yard to the business, then from the business back to the yard, then it goes from the yard to the interchange point, that's where once it's at the interchange, uh, you flip it back to cycle number one. So just as I'm doing with my staging yard. Okay, everyone, so I really hope that helps everybody uh, understand these waybills because I was having a lot of trouble with it myself. And, and even if you're reading these books and you're watching these videos, and even the instructions from, the, from, the, uh, from Micromart, it just is very vague and they don't you know, spell out all those individual steps. So I'm hoping that helps a lot of people. Okay, so that's gonna wrap up the uh, extra video on the waybills. So before I uh, wrap this up and we go our separate ways for, for this time, I just wanted to say that over the last couple of days I've been looking at the YouTube channel and I noticed that um, normally I pride myself in responding back to everybody's questions and you know when people you know give me words of praise, I like to send a little message back to them. But when I was, I normally do that on my phone and I noticed with the mobile app on YouTube that 
there's a lot of functions that you just can't do. So I sat down at the computer the other day because I was just wasting time and I looked and I noticed a lot of the comments, there were some comments that were being held up for approval because they were being marked as spam. So I noticed there was a bunch of people out there that were commenting on my videos and they were kind of hanging out in cyberspace for the one poor guy, Tom, was asking me about the, the, uh, the paint from the, uh, the backdrop. That thing's been sitting out there for like eight months now. So Tom, I really apologize. But so I would just want to tell everybody from now on, if you put a comment up and you're asking a question, I normally respond back within a week. If you don't hear from me in a week, shoot me an email. My email address for, for Central Jersey Conrail is Central Jersey Conrail in scale at gmail.com. Send me that email and say, hey, you know, I need help. I asked a question, you haven't responded back. So this way, in the future, you know, these comments don't just float around out there and, and I don't get to them. So I hope, uh, you know, I'm really sorry if I missed anybody and, you know, don't, don't, you know, please don't uh, be angry at me. So that's all I have. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and we'll see you next time.